today we're hosting our episode in your offices, in Nua Capital offices. First of all, super cozy. Great change of scene for the podcast. Um, so thank you for hosting. Uh, today we're speaking to Stephanie and Khaled. Um, guys, thank you for you know your interest in participating in the podcast. Great to see you guys. And first of all, congratulations. Um, in an elevator pitch-esque uh, form, what is NOAA Capital and, and how do you position yourselves? All right. I think... Uh... Um, well, thanks for coming. I mean, I, thanks for like you like the I'm glad you like the office. I think startup brand design, new. Yeah, yeah, brand new. Sarah did a fantastic job on uh, it. She's out sick today, but she she put this together. So the idea was, I think, feeds into our ethos to some degree. So what you see in the office, which is like a very comfortable space, I think feeds into like a lot of our DNA, which is, I think, to be very open, very at ease, put people at ease as much as we can. And sort of kind of have this sense of familiarity. So I think that's kind of like a big part of what you see in the office translates into what we stand for. So in a nutshell, who we are is, you know, we are, you know, very deeply experienced um, uh, investment platform. So all of us here have worked together for a long time. Uh, not everyone, but the partners for sure. Um, and um, the idea is, you know, we've been doing VC and investing and partnering with startups for the past, you know, 15 years in, in Primarily emerging markets, but really MENA, Turkey, Pakistan, Africa. And we really, on the back of launching Nua, wanted to kind of build something new, different, fresh, um, taking and distilling a lot of the learnings from the past, you know, what, 10, 15 years that we've been kind of engaged in the ecosystem. And I think a big part of that was how do we drive value to the underlying portfolio companies? So we talk about like being founder friendly, that's kind of one element, but structurally, how do you kind of, you know, actually support the founders? Yeah. So a big part of what we do is that, uh, which is how do we kind of partner with you to help support you on a very specific basis. So whether that's um, um, through our wider kind of what we call the NUA network, where we um, uh, have subject matter experts in product, tech, uh, uh, growth hacking, uh, recruitment, et cetera, that we make available for our portfolio companies. And we share some of the upside, our upside with these people. Okay. Uh, eventually we want to bring these people in-house, but we need to kind of grow the platform to do that. The second is, um, you know, one of our partners is focused on value creation, Nitin. So his, 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 he's an operator by background and his focus is really just helping, you know, rolling up his sleeves and helping the company full time. So that's kind of like one core element. I think uh, the other is really as much as we can and, you know, we can do a lot better at this is really be as transparent as, as possible. So we there is something around funds and, and VCs and, and it is private capital generally that's a bit opaque, right? Like it's yeah. like a black box. So one thing we, we're, we're kind of keen on doing is uh, figuring out how uh, we can um, like be very open either with our investors, which is a differentiator in itself. So yeah. we're super transparent with our investors, the good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah. And the same with our founders, you know, and sometimes it hurts us, sometimes it, it it, it, it works to our favor, but I think we want to just be first and foremost honest with ourselves and with the people that we work with. And then lastly, I think critically is amongst ourselves as a team, um, we want to have a sense of family in what we do together. So like we, all of us, like the, say like all, we're nine now. So I think, you know, whether rightfully or wrongfully, you know, you read some kind of like, management business books say that that's wrong like you shouldn't you know, but I, I think like you spend 10 hours a day with somebody um, I mean their family you know like yeah I mean and I think and that that's good and bad right there has like good and bad elements to it and I think I believe it elevates how we work um, and it uh, but um, um, it's and I think it translates to how we kind of interact with others I would add one thing to that um, we also have a very interesting set of partners who are investors and who have been, for the majority of them, uh, they're a mix of corporate investors and family offices, and they've been at the forefront of building up their respective industries in the region for the past few decades. And they, you know, we, we've built this partnership with them and they want to meaningfully work with our founders. And, and was that strategically part of the plan when you were looking for you know, your LPs, you wanted participating LPs. Is that, was that strategically how you guys kind of set yourselves up? 
Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Like, and if you look at like the sectors we invest in, they're tied to our LP base to some degree. It's not like we brought LPs who are, for example, interested in healthcare. So we started investing in healthcare. Mm-hmm. No, we said these are our five segments. We want corporate partners or or investors who are in the space, so that we act as a conduit between them and the startups. It helps the startups and it helps our investors. So that that was kind of the key driver. Um, um, have we kind of fully figured out how to do this well? Not yet, but there's some early, I would say, right, indications yeah. of it kind yeah. of coming together. So work in progress, yeah. yeah. Cool. And and um, so w- w- when you just introduced Nuwen, what you guys do and what sets you guys kind of apart or your value proposition, you you said quite a bit. So I just want to try to unpack that a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Um, so w- one thing that, that that you were just saying was that you you have kind of um, investor operator kind of structure. Even a member of the team is 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 used to being an operator. Nitin, I think you said yeah. his name is. Um, now. Now you've obviously placed a few bets in the last year, two years almost. Um, almost twenty. Yeah. <laughs> twenty yeah. bets, amazing. Um, so you've made twenty investments so far. Um, what 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 is the appetite from the founder side on on your offering, on being supportive from an operation standpoint, on having investors that want to get involved, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Have you seen the appetite? Is it an, an inside facing outwards perception yeah. of what you're offering, or is it actually well received on the other side? Uh, I would say quite well received. I think, though, we've not also, you know, we're a, I mean, we're a startup in our own right. So we're still figuring out how to make that work well. Yeah. So far, I think clearly the early learning is that um, the startups want more the full time resource rather than somebody you can kind of parachute in. But I think we're figuring out how to kind of do more of that. Full time resource as in? As Nitin, as like they want. Nitin is going to be there. He's, he's in the trenches with me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the problem with that doesn't scale unless you have size, right? Unless you have you. But um, so that's one learning. Um, in terms of unlocking the corporate relationships and the LP relationships, I think there's some early successes, but there must be a better way to kind of like scale it as well. So it becomes a function of scale. Um, and I think the way we do it, it's not we push because we don't want to. I mean, it's a it's a it's a nuanced distinction, which is we don't want to push stuff on the founders. We want the founders to take rather than us to kind of push on the self serve model. It's there if you want it, you you help yourself. But I definitely think there's been a lot of pickup on this. Um, if you look at the last ten years, there were maybe a few VCs that were the most active VCs. Yeah. I think today there's much more capital available in the market, and it's a function of how you want to structure your cap table bring in and I think the founders do um, think about that and it's it's something that really that comes yeah. up when we're we're discussing deals and so you know to my understanding you've made 20 kind of investments so far I think that's extremely active I think you guys I'm, I'm, I'm quite surprised and impressed by the rate of <laughs> investment so that's yeah, amazing. Announce a lot. we're kind of announcing yeah. them now because <laughs> just of where they are but yeah it's- sure but and 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 to my understanding they're 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 um, Quite oddly, super early stage, um, or there is a, a penchant towards you know investing earlier than you would have anticipated. Now, can you walk us through that? How has that happened? Was that organic? Was that strategic? Can you explain to us why Nua Capital will get in so early? Yeah, so I think our original proposition was not to be an early stage fund. So we went out to investors <laughs> and we raised money on a very different value proposition. So we, th- when you, if you go back to February 2020 and you look at like our investing background, sure. it tilts more A and, you know, late seed A and B, really. Like, uh, yeah. this, for me personally, that's mostly what I've done. And I think the rest of the team, really, like, we've kind of, that's where we tilted. What happened around the time we started to go fundraise, well, besides COVID, but, like, the, the big thing that, that happens is this ecosystem got super hot. There's a lot more capital flowing yeah. in. And so what we thought of as A and B rounds went from, let's say, let's say an A round would be like a five to $10 million, uh, five to $10 million ticket, maximum 10, at like a $30 million, $40 million valuation, $20 million, it would be in that range. Yeah. So now it's like, you know, 40, 50, 60, 100, you know, and then Bs are like through the roof, yeah. um, 150, 200, 250, 300. And we kind of paused because A, we and the round size is also commensurately increased so we don't have the size for it as in with a hundred million dollar fund we don't we can't write you know 20 20 million dollar checks we just don't have the size we could we could have written 23 million dollar checks right and that would have been an a b strategy 
Um, and so we kind of thought about it and like put our heads together. And um, I think the idea is that the worry is that as the valuations grow, um, we're operating in a market in MENA, in Pakistan, uh, you know, a little bit of Sub-Saharan Africa, where if you just take MENA alone, the size of our aggregate economies are not that large. So even if you invest in fantastic, great companies, do everything right, how big can they get and how big is the multiple once there's a market correction? So let's say you enter at 250 million, 300 million in a Series B, for example, or a late B. Can this become, can this give you like a 50, 20, 30, 40 X return? I mean, the market's not that big, right? Outside of Aramco, like how many public companies are even that size, right? So it's, it's a bit of a, just the function of our economy is not being that large. So therefore we said, you know what, that might be riskier than taking early stage risk and getting more of a company at the early stage at seed stage, taking uh, stage risk um, and then and uh, and then growing with those companies as they evolve. But to be fair, we've also started seeing incredible pipeline at the very, very early stage. I think the caliber yeah. of founders we're seeing, it's, it's like we've never seen before. Yeah, I don't know if... COVID had a role to play, the COVID inflection last two years, but it's it's incredible. So 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 I just want to talk to you those two points a little bit. So are, are you suggesting that even though you might invest earlier stage and the success rates might be a bit lower, the 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 rate of return would generally compensate for that? In That's the hypothesis. Yeah. In aggregate. It's I mean, this is the theory. You could be very wrong <laughs> on this hypothesis and like kick ourselves in three years' time, and be like, well, I should put like $10 million in five companies have learned about it, which is something else we're thinking on a different vehicle. But um, yeah, that basically the risk return trade-off at seed is better because I think we have systemic risk, meaning the economy is just not large enough yeah. to get like large exits, you know? That's the theory, right? The theory could be way off. We could be like, actually have massive failure risk at seed. Um, but we'll see. And I think the other thing is about us, we, we, we're nimble. We can yeah. change and we can evolve and we have, you know, firepower around that. The, the other thing is like we concentrate the capital in the ones that do well. So we'll yeah. double, triple, quadruple down on the ones that win. So you end up with like something like a barbell, like a lot of capital at the early, then it kind of wins out and then more on the ones that kind of emerge. I mean, everything you're saying is super rational like even logical from a market sizing perspective, from opportunity, et cetera. I, I, I definitely align with the hypothesis. I, I, I genuinely would think it's true, <laughs> but, sure. but inshallah. <laughs> now on, on, on the second point um, yeah. that you're seeing a higher caliber of founders, um, I'm kind of seeing that too a little bit, so I, I would kind of agree with that. Um, but but there, the, the founder capacity is there, but the execution capacity is still a huge gap I'm finding in the market at the moment. So, so I think the first point I would agree with is, yeah, I think COVID somehow or remote work or people kind of rethinking kind of where they want to live, where they want to build their careers, et cetera, has attracted a different caliber of, of, of talent. So I, I would generally agree with that. But I still find that there's a huge vacuum in, 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 in their capacity to execute and build teams because the talent um, hasn't necessarily followed suit. At, at I would say an execution level, uh, whether it's product operations, you know, etc. Um, are you guys seeing that in your companies too? Are you seeing very strong founders, but but maybe some struggle in building operational capability, or are you not seeing that at all? I don't know. Are we? Um... I think it's an evolving segment. Like the talent pool is getting better and better and better, so it's not static. But at the founder level. But even like one layer below, yeah. but not at the same pace, for sure. Yeah, right? the founders the are more pace. impressive. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Recruitment remains not unique. Yeah, and, and, and I think that's generally what I'm seeing as well, too, is, is that although you have, you know, founders who have you know, identified fantastic problems to solve, have, have clearly kind of, you know, drawn up the opportunity, understand what the solution would look like, can, you know, s set up the vision, the, the strategy, et cetera, raise the capital, et cetera. Their ability, um, um, you know, in, 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 in building the team to execute on that vision is somewhat still restrained by the lack of talent in the region, right? It's, it's, it, it seems to still be something that's, that's, that's clearly a problem. Yeah. Um, and, um, and, and, and hence why I think your value proposition of being able to plug in someone like Nitin, et cetera, or having that capability is absolutely the right approach. But your ability to scale that is eventually going to be your competitive advantage. Um, I, 
I, I tend to agree with the hypothesis and I tend to similarly get worried because there's tons of money in the market. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's there. There's tons of problems to solve. There's tons of great founders. But, you know, seeing companies, you know, being able to go past launch or yeah. go to market into like year two, year three, being able to scale their business. That's where I'm starting to see a lot of companies kind of have struggle in terms of growth. Um, and so I, I, I believe in the hypothesis of betting early. I just wonder how you take it to the next stages yeah. when the market doesn't have that talent. So maybe let me kind of like zoom out and like think about not just talent, but like the wider kind of ecosystem. So if you think about why we think of back to that question, why do we think we're different or, or trying to build something different at least, is that, you know, um, beyond the value creation, we also want to be a platform where we can handhold founders through different elements, through different cycles, and also kind of contribute back to the ecosystem. And as we build the ecosystem, you know, that, that deepens talent, it deepens, yeah, yeah. you know, government interaction positively, corporate, inter all of that stuff. So, um, you know, we're four partners, if you, if you want to put it that way. You know, two of the four partners, myself and Sara, are, you know, invest, the call us in, like traditionally investment focused. You know, Stephanie is very focused on like, you know, ecosystem building. And that, you know, that was kind of a key part of like how we kind of want to build something. Um, because that helps us through, you know, some of the thesis work you do and like like stuff that uh, Stephanie does helps us kind of elevate the ecosystem and build partnerships and then knit in on the value creation side. So that's kind of one element. The other element is we want to offer different offerings. The value creation is one. The transparency, the thesis building, the research is another. But we also have different products like um, we're just launching a debt product so we can help companies in different ways. So a venture debt project that's uh, we're going to start deploying from that fund. It's a separate fund that we're going to start deploying from hopefully next couple of weeks. Uh, and then eventually we want to build new products so that, you know, if you look at the life cycle of companies, we can help them with different elements, whether that's, you know, recruitment, whether that's intelligence, whether that's um, um, different expansion, cap yeah, expansion yeah. market entry. Yeah, this is like having a suite of products. Right now, fair to say, a bit jumbled, but we're kind of that's the essence of what we're trying to achieve. Cool. And and uh, is there anyone out there um, at the moment that you would say has the same kind of ethos in terms of how they invest, what, what they're trying to focus on? Are there any kind of VCs out there that you feel either you you emulate or or or, or you see as a, a peer that follows the same kind of operating kind of belief? Locally or globally? In in, in Mina, I would assume is there anybody that's doing something quite similar. I think different people like dabble in different elements, whether the multi-product thing or the value creation element. Um, but I think bringing the whole platform into it, I think uh, not, not to kind of uh, blow like to, are you special? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like are we are we are we more special? I I I, I think different people do different elements of it, but sure, not sure. the whole kind of. And what I would say is, and, and the way I would ask the question is, is you're you're, you're super early stage. Right, which already in itself eliminates a large portion of participants right now in your space. Then you're also plugging in operational kind of, of solutions. Um, then you have kind of um, you know investor support and participation as well, yeah. and 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 stuff like that. So you know it's not just are you founder friendly. I think I'm 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 past that. Yeah. You know it's more like real solutions. Um, so when I think about Nuwa today, I don't. I can't think of top of my mind someone who participates at your stage and who offers this kind of comprehensive support. No, I don't think so. And the ability to give different forms of capital. Yeah, and, I, that I haven't heard uh, of at all, actually. Yeah, because we haven't, we haven't announced it, so you're, 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 you're first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. 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 Um, okay. But yeah, we're, we're doing that with a partner, actually, with a joint venture with somebody else, but you know, we'll, we'll announce that in detail later. But uh, that's another kind of element of it. It's like, how do we... You know, help support like that, and then the third product is is really that conduit with kind of operating LPs with our investors, the corporates, to kind of partner and grow our underlying portfolio companies. They both benefit, and that's kind of something. It's kind of third leg that we stand on, I think, or trying to. I mean, this is all early stage. This is all building. So, like, a and so you guys are a hundred million dollar fund. Uh, you've deployed, or you made twenty bets so far. Your ambition is to deploy the fund by when? Fully? A couple of years. Yeah, two years from yeah. now. So 2025-ish, 
latest. Maybe earlier. 2024. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three years. So let's say we start deploying 2021, mm -hmm. 20, three years until yeah. two years from now. Yeah. And are there any ambitions to take the, the, the fund more global or is it always going to be a Middle East? Oh, good question. Um, I, 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 we have, a, I think, a passion for a wider thing. We've done some stuff in Africa in our past lives that was really good that yeah. we like, we'd like to do more of. We're really interested in Pakistan. Um, we love Turkey. So like we, some of our be best performing companies in the past have been in Turkey. Uh, I, I think like our interest is more kind of EM. I'm interested in EM, yeah. right? I think we all are. Yeah. Like, uh, we're not interested in like, going to Europe or the US. Or, um, but I think we have a passion for EM and um, emerging markets. I, mean, I hate using the word EM, I mean, but you know, there's no better word, but like a, the, the emerging world really, where you know, you're backing founders who, right, who are solving for big problems, really meaningful problems. Like today, uh, I mean, historically it's been like copycat stuff, but you're now seeing those kind of um, solutions that are like solving for big, big problems globally. Um, so that's that's something that we're we're really, really interested in. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I, I mean, it'd be refreshing to have a fund or any brand of the matter, not just, you know, investor brands, but any brand for the matter come out of the Middle East participate globally. Yeah. Um, yeah, that we could do actually. So primarily, I think we'd focus on MENA, GCC, Pakistan, sure. Turkey, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. But I think we could, we might do actually some deals outside of those geographies as well. That's yeah, we possible. have, yeah, we can, yeah. we can. We have some allocation of funds to do that. Yeah. Um, we do it sparingly uh, or we'll do it sparingly. But uh, but that's, you know, if, if you, that's how kind of you build your track record over time. You start sure. kind of widening it and you, you build networks in those kind of new geographies and you grow out from there. Okay, so you're almost two years in. Well, one year from starting to invest. I think we lost six months in the middle of COVID. But yeah, two years since we kind of, you know, started. We were setting up. We, were setting so up, we didn't yeah. really lose yeah. them, but. <laughs> yeah, two years since we kind of started. What, what surprised you? Like what? What did you not expect to happen happen outside of the pandemic? Yeah, well, that's a big one, but you know, um, what's um, been one of the challenges that you didn't you didn't anticipate? So I think when we when we when we started, no, we didn't anticipate to build our LP relationships online. I think these are very long term real partners. You mean online, like digital, like online Zoom digital. calls? Um, <laughs> that was interesting. So that was interesting. Um, you know, uh, some of our LPs, we hadn't met them in person until recently. So I don't think any of us anticipated that. Mm, yeah, I think that was that was definitely just not the way people tend to raise money. Yeah. yeah. So that was a bit of a challenge. I think also like, you know, finding our own rhythm in a new setting is, was a challenge, like figuring out like how we're going to kind of do things together and um, how we grow the team, how we kind of build, how we really cement the DNA. And this is an ongoing thing. It's not right. like settled. I think that's a new challenge because in a way it's a startup in of itself. Um, so I'd say that was, that was a kind of a, cause we mostly, most of the team we've worked together a very long time, but it's a, a prior to new, but then in a new context, it's very different. Right. And so like, you know, we, you know, making sure that we're able to kind of like gel well and like yeah. complement each other in the best way possible. Is an especially, ongoing. sorry, especially when you bring in new people to yeah. the team. We also don't want to be that kind of clique, clique yeah. that's so worked like together speeds. before. And so naturally, you know, we mesh really well together. So create a new culture, not, yeah. not, not yeah. trying to extend an old culture from somewhere else. No, 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 no. no, no. no. I yeah. think, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, exactly. Like build a new culture and then make sure that those, because half the team is from, has not worked with us before. A nearly half so like it becomes make sure there are no two speeds within the organization and this is tiny we're like nine piece like very small very so you small have to make sure that we're you have to get it right you yeah. have to get it right you have to yeah. make sure that they can benefit to a certain extent from the culture we've built but they can also enrich it and that we're open to that so so on that point and an excuse for the blunt question so what's different here than at wanda for you guys so uh, on that point culturally what have you guys done that's a bit different how would you kind well, of position I, I, It's not about like different. I think it's just about like, you know, um, how we kind of think about, you know, collective decision making, maybe a little bit more. Um, where, um, so I think that's the kind of the main, the main it's kind the of family thing. Family, as in we are a family. Yeah, I think like maybe like I feel, and I don't know if Steph feel the same, I feel like really 
want to like double down this idea of like we are a family you know and with it we, we bring a lot together uh, like um and that way we kind of walk in lockstep with each other overall and that, that's not to say that it wasn't like that before but it's just a different feeling and a different vibe and you know we're um, and I think that it, it, this is what we're kind of trying to kind of build. Sure. It's not to say that don't, like one is superior to the other or there's a way to do things versus another. I wasn't yeah. suggesting that either. Yeah, yeah, no, but just to, <laughs> just to put that disclaimer out there. But I think that's it, like to kind of double down on the idea of of, uh, of family. I mean, that's like, I, I keep bringing that up. I don't know why. But Sounds like, a bit that's cultish, to be honest. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we next are time not I come a here, cult. You're going to wear all the same colors. And... <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually because everything seems to be a bit beige in here, uh, by the way. <laughs> it's, uh, it's navy and, and black uh, on most days. No, look, and add to that, I think the, the, the premise of NUA is to really kind of redefine uh, a venture capital and starting really at the beginning of the value chain, so with our limited partners. And the fact that we we inherently work closer with them and work closer with our founders that in and of itself breeds a bit of a different culture yeah no no i i i totally understand i think um i think if you're able to crack kind of a super warm um authentic transparent relationship which is what you're after um uh, i think founders definitely feel it i think they're going through a very difficult time so if you can provide that environment that goes beyond just being an investor I think that's absolutely needed in the space, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's why like, we have this couch as a therapy couch. You know what I mean? Like, so that, right now we're early, so nobody had needs therapy in the portfolio, but like, it'll come, like, from, so like, that's a therapy for each other. Or in the team. Or therapy for each other. So, like, it's strategically placed. All right. Um, guys, thank you so much for the time. It's been no, a pleasure speaking to you. Um, I, I look forward to hearing the story in part two, maybe a year from now, yeah. and see how many therapies you guys have done on the couch. Yeah. And um, I appreciate your time, and congratulations on the launch of Noah. Well, thank you. Thank that you. That was awesome. Thanks. Thanks. That was fun. Thanks.